All right. Okay. I am in a hotel and the lighting is not fabulous. So I'm pretty washed out here. Let me go close a blind a little bit and see if this makes a difference. So that I actually have a face. Let me come back here and see if that little bit of light. Okay, that's better. All right, so hello, happy Friday. I wanted to hop on today to talk to you guys about sleep. Uh, this is gonna be pretty brief. I'm gonna give you a couple of my key tips when I am working with my clients who are dealing with any level of hormonal imbalance. Um, the two are really symbiotic. They go hand in hand. If you're not sleeping well, your body isn't healing, your body isn't feeling well, you don't have the energy, and it's only a matter of time before it starts to feel like many other things in your body are starting to break down. So. Why is it so important that you get proper rest? We know this when it comes to our children. We don't allow them to stay up till you know all hours of the night and party all of the time and have stimulants before they go to bed. Hopefully that's not what you're doing. But when it comes to ourselves and our adult bodies, sleep is the thing that we will trade all the time for anything else. We'll trade in sleep for our exercise, to clean the house, to get more work done, to stay up and watch Netflix, to scroll on social media. But your body is requiring this sleep because your brain is dependent on this in order to actually be able to clean up all of the toxins and the debris of the day that you have had. So a lot of people are familiar with the lymphatic system, which is the system in your body that is helping to purify and to detoxify and to move all of the waste products out of your body so they aren't circulating and toxifying your system. Well, when it comes to sleep, you actually have another system that's very similar to that lymphatic system that's in your body and your brain called the glymphatic system. And your glymphatic system goes in and does this sweep. It like washes the dishes, mops the floor of everything you've gone through during the day. So this isn't just cleaning up and clearing out toxins from the food that you've eaten, from the drinks that you've had, from the stimulants that you've had. This is also coming from the stress that you have been going through. So whether it's at work, a relationship, your health, whatever it may be, your body has to go in physically in your full body and up into the brain space as well too and do this full cleanup so that you can rest and restore and so that you can rebuild, that you can refire new synapses neurologically the next day, that your cells get a good sloughing, that your muscle tissue, that you're actually producing HGH, your human growth hormone. So this is a big one for people, especially who are exercising to try to uh, increase their body's ability to recognize insulin. So somebody who's dealing with insulin resistance, polycystic ovarian syndrome, diabetes, they're struggling to lose weight, and so they've started to exercise. Okay, that's great. But if you're going in and you're exercising and you're doing your strength training and you're showing up and you're lifting hard and you're doing all of that, but you aren't eating properly, you aren't resting enough, you aren't hydrated enough, your body is going to be starving for those nutrients that really kind of complete the transaction of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And when it comes to strength training, to building lean muscle tissue, which by the way, ladies, when you say to your personal trainer or to your girlfriends, I don't, I don't want to get bulky, I just want to tone. I just want to build tone. Tone is an appearance of having greater muscle density. So you're actually building muscle, which gives the appearance of having toned muscles. That is going to happen by how much human growth hormone your body is producing. The majority of it is produced when you are sleeping. So it's so, so critical. If you have a high level of stress, if your thyroid is out of balance, if you're having issues with the communication from your hypothalamus to your pituitary gland, to your adrenals, to your ovaries, so you have heavy painful periods, you don't have a period right now, you're going through perimenopause and your sleep is just all over the map and it's not something that you are prioritizing, all of those other things that are out of balance are going to continue to grow bigger and bigger um, and just become you know, that thing where we start to say, this is just me, this is just normal for me. I'm going to tell you that not being able to fall asleep at night or waking up between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. is not a normal pattern. It might feel common for you. It might be common between your girlfriends or the other women that you speak to who are going through similar things, but that does not mean that it is normal. So what I want you to start to think about 
is the first thing that we have to do. So the first thing I want you to do is not run to the supplement store and go and pick up a bunch of supplements. Now I am gonna talk about supplements for a little bit because they can be helpful, but they are not your first tier. That is not the foundation, that's not what you work on. And this is the mistake people make. They go and spend the money, they buy the supplements, they take the melatonin, they take the L-theanine, they take the magnesium, and then they lie there and they're like, this doesn't work. Or it only works for a couple of nights. And the reason is, is that most people don't have a deficiency of producing melatonin. Most people don't have the inability to actually sleep. It's that either your circadian rhythm is totally thrown off, the circadian ebb and flow and rhythm of your cortisol levels is off, meaning that as opposed to having higher levels of cortisol in the morning, which is what it's supposed to do, within about 30 minutes of waking up, cortisol levels are supposed to spike and then gradually start to decline as the day goes on so that your body, that your penile gland gets the message and as it's dark outside and the environment is getting quieter and calming down that okay, now it's time, cortisol has lowered, now I can produce the melatonin, which is actually going to allow you to sleep. If cortisol is jacked at night, so you are running around after work, you're getting the kids to all of their events, you're staying up late on social media, you're cleaning your house and doing laundry at 11 p.m., you know, you're having a glass of wine at dinner or later, you're having another latte later in the evening, all of those signs are stimulants to your body and to your nervous system and to your adrenals. Those are not signs of like rest and digest and calm down and let's go to sleep. Those are all signs of it's still daytime, we're still on fire, we are still in anticipatory mode, life is still happening, body, I need you to stay firing for me. And so we'll go through this pace and then we lie down in our bed and we're like, the hamster wheel starts to go, you're exhausted. Like every cell in your body is so tired but you can't fall asleep because you've got all the wrong switches left turned on, okay? I hope this is making sense so far. Physiologically, you can't produce the melatonin that is required to have a restful night's sleep if your cortisol switch is still turned on. So we need to work towards turning the cortisol levels off so that melatonin can be properly produced. Now maybe you have something different happening where you don't have trouble falling asleep but you wake up between one and four in the morning. Now, this actually, this pattern doesn't just start before you go to bed and really sleep in and of itself. Your sleep hygiene is going to start from the time that you wake up in the morning. How you live your day, how you show up in your day is what is going to revisit you and happen at night. So if you wake up in the morning and every day starts with caffeine, maybe multiple cups of caffeine, you are going to be struggling throughout the day with balancing out healthy blood sugar levels. Your cravings are probably going to get the best of you. Uh, if you're having more of the stimulants, whether it's caffeine, and yes, that even includes black tea. Green tea is different, um, and organic is obviously the best choice and source, but that has polyphenols, and the caffeine doesn't actually hit our nervous system and spike our adrenal response the same way that having coffee does. Coffee is also quite estrogenic, so it is something that you really need to be careful of. Um, that being said, if your blood sugar is unstable, your cravings start to move out of control, all of these things, what goes up must come down. This is an internal stressor to your body. And when your body's under stress, whether you're having a hypoglycemic response because you've gone too long without eating, or you haven't eaten the right things, and now your blood sugar level is dropping and you're getting hangry, and then you respond by having something that's gonna quickly pick your energy and your mood and your sugars back up. This oscillating activity that you're doing throughout the day, every single time that this happens, your adrenals are going to be producing cortisol, which is your main stress hormone. The more adipose tissue, fat tissue that you have in your body, your fat tissue actually has the ability to create its own cortisol without even going to the adrenals and asking for that. So behind the scenes, this cascading effect is going on and so you get to the evening when you wanna to go to sleep and your body is jacked. You are like high and you can't get into that restful state. When you're waking between one and four, this is often times where your liver, so typically between, you know, at 3 a.m. and then again at 3 p.m., and sometimes it's a little bit before, not typically after, there's a reset point in our circadian rhythm and where the liver does a little bit of a, a tune-up and a cleaning. This can oftentimes, if your blood sugar is unstable, have the body wake up. If you also are eating too close to going to bed, if you were overstimulated before going to bed, you're on your iPhone, you are on your iPad, whatever it may be, you have too much light that's coming in your room, you have electronics that are around you. 
that is again another sign that the body is going into a stress mode and so what will happen is your body will wake you in the middle of the night okay now some other things that might be happening too is you might be going to bed with way too much clothing on your bedroom temperature might be too hot so you're freezing when you get into bed at night you bundle up you get into bed you pile blankets all over top of you maybe you even have a heating blanket that's in bed with you and you go to sleep and you don't realize that you're hot until a couple hours later you wake up and are like oh my gosh that excess level of heat, much like all of the environmental stimulants, is a stressor to your body and is going to increase your body's cortisol production. Getting up to pee in the middle of the night. Now most people wake up in the middle of the night and they think, obviously I have to pee, otherwise why the heck would I be waking up? I'm going to encourage you to really ask yourself when you wake up, do you really have to pee? Can you lie there a little bit longer? Because when you stand up, your body has now received the signal again like, Okay, we're in motion, we're upright, day must be beginning. I need to start to produce that cortisol again. Or you are going to the washroom and you have light on and now your penile gland recognizes that there is daylight coming in. Your body doesn't recognize whether or not it is, you know, in the middle of the night that it's like your bathroom light switch that's gone on or it's the daylight that's coming through. It's going to recognize light and think, okay, I'm getting this nudge to produce cortisol. So you get up to do this quick two minute pee and get back into your bed. The problem is, is your body received this message to start to increase that surge of cortisol production. Well, now you lie there and you start to toss and turn and it takes you hours and it's so frustrating. And then we do things like we'll get onto our iPad or onto our iPhone because we can't go back to sleep. We'll turn a light on and read a book and you're just actually further creating um, th this little bit of a mess that's happening inside of your body at that moment. The reason most people don't fall back asleep until around 4, 4.30 in the morning is because it takes that long for the cortisol to actually burn off. Once the cortisol burns off and your body's been lying still, now the body gets the message, okay, now it's dark again, we're lying still again, okay, I guess we must be going to sleep again, I'll produce that melatonin and help this happen. And you'll fall back asleep around 4, 4.30 until your alarm goes off, somewhere around 6 or 7. And most women that I work with tell me that those last few hours, their most restful sleep that they get all night long. And this is the sleep that they are living off of in their every day. This is so unhealthy. And if this is something that is happening over a very long period of time, it's only a matter of time before your adrenals become more affected, before the communication between your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland and your thyroid, your adrenals and your ovaries starts to break down. You see, at the root of every hormonal imbalance that's going on in our bodies as women, it's actually a communication issue. That's really what's going on, is there is miscommunication or misfiring of the communication or a lack of communication that is happening between various systems and various glands and hormones within your body. Your hormones are chemicals. They are strong, powerful chemical messengers that are having a conversation all the time. But conversations need to be led. They need to be directed, right? It's So we can understand this as a human being right now having this type of a conversation but it's different when it's going on in our body because it's not something that we see happening so this miscommunication goes on for so long beneath the layers and behind the scenes and when you actually do have signs and symptoms that's typically when things have started to get out of control a little bit and don't freak out because there are so many things that we can do to get things back in place. When I work with women in the Hormone Project, we're together for about three months. It's a 10 week program, but you do private consultation. So all in all, it's really about three and a half months that I spend with you. And pretty much every single woman who comes into that group who is dealing with some level of insomnia or sleep you know, erratic patterns, we have rebalanced everything out and reestablished that circadian rhythm, their cortisol patterning, all of that within that very short period of time. So there are solutions. So how do you begin? What do you begin with? Well, you could go back and watch from the beginning and do the antithesis of all the things that I said most people are doing right now. Reduce your sugar and reduce your stimulants during the day. Stabilize your blood sugar. Consume more healthy fats. Get more fiber. Get more protein in. Hydrate your body. Break up with your connection to coffee so that we can reestablish this healthy function in your adrenal glands and your liver. Ladies, if you are trying to balance your hormones and you aren't addressing your gut, your liver, and your adrenal connection, you might as well just stop what you're doing. You would get so much further along if you were to press pause on all of your efforts and actually learn and educate yourself on the processes that need to happen. If you're not dealing with your digestive situations, if you're constipated and the exit path is bunged up, please stop trying to do detoxes and work your way from the top down. 
you've got to work at addressing your food sensitivities, the things that are causing inflammation in your body, in your specific individual body. Remove those irritations, replace them with healthier foods, rebuild and re-inoculate the environment, that ecosystem that is your microbiome, your gut, okay? And then from there, we've got to work on your liver. This is where you're metabolizing your hormones, your estrogens. This is where, you know, methylation is taking place. You have two phases of detoxification. So your body, you know, as a woman, you're producing three different forms of estrogens, and then there's three different pathways that they will actually be broken down to, to be properly detoxified through two more pathways to get out of your body. It's a complex system, and it requires you to honor and respect your body in a way where you are not junking your system up. You're not drinking wine X amount of nights a week. You're not having all the sweet lattes. You're not skipping the meals. You're not doing these extreme dieting tactics. You know, you're not skipping the process of actually healing what's going on in your body and just running out to buy a bunch of supplements. If you're constipated and you have a congested liver, you have heavy menstrual cycles, breast tenderness, extreme PMS, acne, anxiety, depression, and mood swings, I'm guaranteeing you majority of those supplements you're buying, they're acting like a Band-Aid right now. They will not solve the root cause. You have to go beneath the surface. And this is where I lose some people sometimes because they're like, well, I'm prepared to do this, this, and this, but you know, that thing up there where I've got to remove or take that out, I'm not interested. And I'm like, then this program isn't for you. You know, it's like, it's why I'm not most people's, I shouldn't say most people, but some people's like first choice nutritionist is I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I want to work with the women who are like, I'm fucking done. I'm done feeling like shit. I'm done making the excuses. I'm done with nobody understanding what's going on in my body. My bo my doctor not giving me the answers. You know, sometimes even like working with other healthcare practitioners, feeling like it's the same thing, cycled and repeated over and I'm fucking done. Those are the women that I want to work with. Because my whole mission and purpose is to up-level your education and give you the inspiration and the confidence to know that you can change what is going on in your body, your sleep, your cycle, all of that within a very short period of time. It doesn't have to be arduous. It doesn't have to be complicated. But you've got to be willing to actually pay attention to your body and to the recommendations, okay? So you cut those stimulants out. What's your bedtime routine? Like, I'm sure your children have a bedtime routine. When you had a baby, you weren't just like, you know, keep them up, have them bouncing all around, have them with all the lights, have the music on super loud in the house, and then like chuck them into their crib and be like, it's bedtime, go to sleep. That, that didn't happen. What did you do with your babies? What do you do with your children? You try and quiet them down. You set a routine so that they know, they anticipate sleep is coming. They brush their teeth, they have a bath, they get ready for bed, they read a story. They can watch maybe a show. They start to calm down. The lighting is dimmer. You get them into their, it's a whole thing. But then for us as adults, it's like, okay, the kids go to bed and we're like running against the clock. Like how many things can we check off of our so not important to-do list? Because majority of the things that live in our to-do list, they don't actually matter at the end of the day, right? It's like, I went through that for a very long period of time where it was, I was missing life because I was afraid of there being a mess. I was like missing engaging with my kids because I didn't want it to look like anybody lived in my house. And y you've got to flip the switch. Like, let there be mess. Wh who cares? Let there be mess. Enjoy your time with your family and then create self-care for yourself. What does your room look like? Do you have too much light in your room? Do you have electronics that are around your head? Do you have artificial fragrances? Do you use Febreze in your bedroom or have plugins or have you know artificial candles that are burning? You need to get rid of all of that stuff. All of those things that are going to be neuro and excitotoxins to your body that are releasing more excess chemical forms of estrogen into your system. Start to diffuse essential oils, vetiver, lavender, wild orange, balance, different proprietary blends that are out there. Whichever one makes you feel like, Ah, my shoulders are dropping. Maybe it's cedarwood or sandalwood. So much information out there now on those things. Cool the temperature in your room. You know, don't go to sleep in a ton of clothing. Simple things like that. Do some fascial work before you go to bed. Use your yoga tune-up balls. Do your gorgeous ball. Do some meditation or a little bit of stretching. Right? Like, it doesn't have to take a long time. You can literally close your eyes for 60 seconds when you first lie in your bed and just go through, like, what am I grateful for today? It, can I notice my breath? Can I feel it deeply? Can I soften my jaw? Can I drop my shoulders? It doesn't have to be a program that you follow. It, it's just about changing the energy and your intention around how you want to feel and then what you have to do to create the way that you want to feel.
okay? Um, so routine and sleep environment, those are the first two points. And then, okay, when it comes to, and you know, we've touched on food as well too, I think we all know now the things that are causing the biggest triggers in our body and in our life. What we may not understand is that there's a big difference where, like when we have a food allergy or we have a very strong acute response to something, we know that pretty rapidly. You know, if you have an allergy and you get like prickliness around the mouth or you get swelling or the tongue or you feel it in your throat or your airway, like you know immediately and you aren't gonna go near that food. Like that's acute. If you get congested right away, but if you have a delayed reaction, if you have some more food sensitivities, like you could eat a piece of bread on Monday and not get your congestion or headache until Wednesday because it's gonna take your system that long to really kind of manage what it is that's going on. And so it's harder because we don't make the connection from Monday to Wednesday on what it was we had on that first day. So you have to be really, you know, pay attention and focus on the most common irritants. They are going to be gluten. They are going to be dairy. They are going to be excess sugar alcohol, caffeine, soy in some regards to some people as well too. I will tell you though, in working with women for the last two decades, soy is not an absolute no product in food for me. It comes down to the source and the quality when and how we are using it. For a lot of women I work with who are postmenopausal, phytoestrogens in the soy are actually a beautiful thing. Their blood work is actually improving. The way that their body is breaking down certain estrogens and out of the harmful 4-OH and 16 and into the healthy 2-OH is actually improving. So there's no blanket statement um, when it comes to that, it comes down to the bio-individuality of that person. And this is where working with a practitioner really does help. Now, I don't recommend having it every single day, even for the people that are postmenopausal. I don't recommend having the same thing of anything every single day. Um, so that's really important to understand and to know as well too. The other thing that I would recommend to you is taking a look at how close to bed are you eating. Try and have at least two to three hours before you go to sleep without eating something. Try to have a period of intermittent fasting where you have at least 12 hours from dinner to breakfast. So that would mean if you ate dinner at 6.30, you're not having anything again until 6.30 in the morning. That's a 12 hour fasting period. Give your digestive system a chance to actually break things down, to heal, to rest. That's truly what digestion means. Give your brain the opportunity through your lymphatic system to do the same thing. If you're eating right before bed and you eat as soon as you wake up, there's not enough time in between there for the real work to start to happen, okay? Um, and then when it does come to supplementation, I always talk about my foundational five. That is from the womb to the tomb, right? It's your probiotics, your vitamin D, your magnesium, your juice plus, and what's our extra one? Your omega-3s um, for that. So those are your elementals. Now, what are the key ones that can help sleep in the evening? So first thing would be magnesium. Typically I find, and does it matter if you're doing the bisglycinate versus the citrate? Again, really comes down to you as the individual. Naturally Calm, which is the powdered citrate, easy to put into your water and to drink before bed. Good one for people who have constipation to help to increase the motility and get things flowing and going. Bisglycinate, um, I find that one tends to work a little bit better for people with sleep and usually about 400 milligrams. Now again, I don't know you, I don't know your health history, so don't take this as the black and white is what I'm saying to you. I'm painting a general picture for you, okay? Um, how you'll know if you've taken too much magnesium is you will have looser bowels. You're not gonna like poop your pants in your bed, okay? That won't happen. But your body will let you know that it might have been a little bit too much. But I have some clients who are taking like four and five times what the bottle says um, in order for their body to actually be able to respond. Depends how deficient you are in that mineral right now. L-theanine is a beautiful one. So L-theanine is actually derived, extracted from green tea coming from the same leaf, but it doesn't have a stimulating effect. It actually has the reverse on your nervous system. It takes you out of that fight or flight sympathetic and drops you into your parasympathetic, which is where that rest and digest happens. L-theanine or withania are my preferred choices for the person who can't stop thinking about the things they didn't get done in the day. So it might not mean that you fall asleep like that, but you are going to have a more restful experience on your way into sleep. And that's one of the things in the beginning is, you know, you need to get to bed by 10, 10, 30 at the latest. You can put your eyes back in your head because yes, that is when you need to get to bed. But if you can't fall asleep at that time, you can still be resting. You can do a brain dump, you could journal, you can listen to a meditation, you can do your fascial work, but you're still sending the message to your body to rest. You have to train your body. You have to train your system. This can't just happen over a night or a couple of nights. Like this becomes a habit and a pattern and routine and then a ritual that you do over and over again. 
Um, the other thing would be 5-HTP um, and possibly some melatonin. I haven't found great results in giving melatonin on its own. I like it in a combination. So the synergy of how certain nutrients work in our body. So I'll have somebody take two or 400 milligrams of magnesium about an hour before bed. And if they don't remember an hour before, they can take it right before. Um, oh, I'm just seeing some posts. That she knows her shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but I really love when 5-HTP, L-theanine, and melatonin are all put together. And there's a really great product, and this is not like a sponsored paid endorsement, okay? That's, that's, not, that's not what this is. Um, I've just used it with so many people, and I love it. And I actually will use this with my daughter sometimes because she dances two evenings a week really late. And then she has to get up for school like 10 hours after she's home from dance. And it's by a company called Natural Factors. It's called Tranquil Sleep. It's a chewable lozen lozenge. It's beautiful. Works well for a lot of women that I work with. Um, my daughter is 11. I do use it with her. Again, I'm her mom. That's my discretion. It is safe um, for her to have. It has one and a half milligrams of melatonin in it. You can get this at most of your natural health food stores. Um, and, and I have found it to work beautifully. And with the essential oils, not just diffusing in your room, but putting some onto your wrist. Um, you can also make a spritzer for your bedroom and do like a couple drops of lavender with some distilled water and spray your linens. Please don't spray Febreze. Please stop using chemical detergents that you are then sleeping in at night. Like all of those things are off-gassing. Your bedding material, your mattress, all of those things could be impacting why you're not sleeping, okay? Um, and then the other thing as well too is massage your feet with these oils. Like your feet are a beautiful way to access all of the nerves and all of the various, you know, vital organs and systems throughout your body. That's the whole science and, and study and practice behind reflexology. So, um, I just want to go through here, make sure I got everything. I think I did. I think I did. I am uh, I'm in the midst of another hormone project tour right now. I am actually still in Kitchener. Um, I've done Barry and Kitchener, a couple of podcasts this week. Tomorrow is uh, all about Toronto. Um, so I'm going to be heading out onto the highway soon and shifting on out of here. Um, what my thoughts are on St. John's wort. St. John's wort can be great too. For some people, it can be stimulating, and you would know that after a first, your first couple of doses of it, if it actually kind of revved you up. Um, but St. Jo John's wort, um, it can work well too. I would take it in a tincture, not in a capsule. Um, oh, Katie, you're in Kitchener. Yeah, I spoke last night at Westmount Golf Course. Don't worry, I'll be back. I'll be back probably end of spring, early summer. Um, but if you like Facebook Lives like this, I'm actually going to be doing a series. So this is the first of five that I'm doing over the next week and a half. Um, and we'll give you, you know, notice the day over the day before. These are recorded. We'll keep reposting them. You can go to genpike.com and opt in for the newsletter. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, I send you out valuable information just like this. You know, it's I'm just here to try and I'm on a mission to revolutionize our education as women about our bodies. And I call you to be part of this. And I call you to share this with as many women and young girls as possible. Okay, we all deserve to know this information. It's actually not fair that there's just only a, a certain amount of us that are getting it right now. So continue to pay it forward. Um, yes, and yeah, if you are interested in the Hormone Project, um, we start on January the 29th which is a Monday, so in a week and a bit, you can go to jenpike.com um, or you can email us personally at info at jenpike.com and we can send you the direct link. You can look at the entire program, everything it entails, the weekly schedule, the whole gamut and get yourself onto the list and get your first consultation, your private consult with me booked right away. Everything's done online, Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, so it doesn't matter geographically where you live. Oh, you are so welcome. Awesome. Have a fantastic day, everyone. And with my full permission, spread this information and help the other women in your life. Have a fantastic weekend.